Institute of Land and Foundation. We know that our work would not be possible without the work that they have been doing with all of you across the state. And so thank you for that. We are delighted to be here with you. We know we have a very short period of time. And so as, uh, as I want to just briefly introduce you to the folks who are up here and then they, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a few comments. They are each going to give you about five minutes worth of comments. Then we would love for you to introduce yourselves to each other at the table for a few minutes and develop uh, what questions you might have for us. And we hope to be able to get to the, the question part of this as well, all in that 30 minutes. So we're going to be very efficient about this and try to give you the information that you need. Uh, to my right is Dana McKenzie, who is uh, Director of Technology for Cook County, and we are grateful that she is on the panel representing a local government perspective and with years of knowledge. And next to her is Gary Evans, who is from Winona, and Gary uh, works with works for and uh, is in, in very involved in Hiawatha Broadband and brings one of the important perspectives of a provider perspective to what we've been doing. And next to him is Dick Schoberg, and Dick uh, owns Schoberg Cable and represents the northwest part of the state on our panel. We actually uh, traveled up to Thief River Falls to see Dick so he could drive five minutes to the task force meetings and we got to do what he usually does, which is travel a long distance to see us. So I'm delighted to have all three of them with us today. And I'm going to start off with just what our mandate is. We serve at the pleasure of Governor Dayton, and we serve at the, uh, and to fulfill an executive order that Governor Dayton signed and put into effect that really is the backbone of implementing state goals that were put into statute in 2010. I have to say that yes, I was the Speaker of the House when the goals were put into place. I remember the debate on the floor very well. It was heated that day. And I probably did not imagine that my future life would involve uh, heading up this task force. So it's kind, of, it's kind of neat to see how things come around. So those goals include making sure that Minnesota is in the top five for broadband speed by 2015, that we're in the top five for access by 2015, and that we are in the top 15 of global uh, measurement as well. That is a harder thing for us to measure, we will say that. I'm not going to read the whole executive order to you today, but know that we have organized our work around that goal, and all of our efforts are really put together to make sure that the things that we are distributing both in our reports and information and policy recommendations to the governor and hopefully to the legislature as well, um, that we make sure that we are aimed at that goal. The task force members broadly represent providers uh, with a variety of technologies. We are, uh, I guess I would say technology agnostic. We are not uh, all about one sort of technology to deliver broadband. Businesses that are using broadband, consumers who might be underserved, local government units, including cities and counties, as well as tribal governments have been represented on the task force, and education and healthcare have also been represented. So we are a broad group of folks. We have traveled the state this year. We've had a, a fast, uh, fast and furious uh, work that has been going on. We've been to Sauk Rapids and St. Cloud, to Winona where we focused on e-health. We've been to Cass Lake and Deer River where we saw a teleclassroom demonstration and also saw other needs and uses for broadband. Thief River Falls where we visited uh, the campus there as well as saw DigiKey and visited with DigiKey, a major employer in the Northwest. We visited McPhail Center for Music and saw their online music residency, where they are having master teachers work with teachers in the classrooms across the state to deliver music education. And of course, we are here with you, which we are very excited about. 
All the folks on the task force uh, who have served or are currently serving, please stand up quickly so people can see you if you've been involved in the task force so people know the other folks involved. Don't be shy. Keith, I see you out there. Please stand up and be recognized and just know that you can talk to these folks uh, throughout the conference. Thank you for your service. We also, um, we also broadened the work that we're doing and it's important to mention we know that access is critically important, that not all Minnesotans have access. You are seeing that with what Bill just presented to you. But we also know and focus pretty quickly on the fact that we also have to be thinking about adoption rates and that we need Minnesotans to adopt broadband for it to be fully deployed across the state, border to border broadband. And so we've also focused on ways to engage Minnesotans on making sure that they are connecting, uh, literally connecting with broadband and seeing good examples of that. We have produced three reports already. We have a fourth major report coming in early December. A piece of that report you're going to hear from each of the three of these folks about things that we are working on and have been working on throughout the report. The, the group has organized itself around these areas, local, subgroups of location, uh, state of broadband survey, research and data, broadband adoption, and I know that Shirley Walls from Thomson Reuters, who stood up uh, as service on the panel, is, is presenting tomorrow. Coordination across government levels, Dan will be talking about that in a moment. Monitoring and understanding the FCC PUC decisions. Gary has been tracking that for us with his subgroup. Best practices, incentives, and frankly, policy recommendations, and Dick is going to handle that. And we have just added a mobile category as well to our work, and that will be reflected in the report. You can download all of our reports. They're both on the Connect Minnesota website. They're more fun when they can be download them, honestly, because they have all the maps, and you can interact with them then, um, or on the Department of Commerce website as well. The, everything is housed from the task force. So I am going to turn this over to Dan.